tonight on American Greed Bonus Edition. At the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame in Massachusetts in August 2011, the crowd is amped as this year's inductee, Dennis Rodman, arrives for the ceremony. I was invited by Dennis. I thought it was going to be amazing, which it was. Dennis was very emotional, and it was a great weekend. In a red carpet photo, an attractive middle-aged woman is positioned directly in front of Rodman. Her face is beaming with pride. She was wearing all white. I mean, she was stunning. I mean, it was really something that you're like, who is this person? You would think she was getting inducted. After singling her out with a kiss as he enters the ceremony, Peggy King, also known as Peggy Fulford, is among the first people a tearful Rodman mentions. Peggy King, Elton King, the family that these guys are taking care of me these days. Thank you, Peggy. A.J. Bright is a friend and former manager of Dennis Rodman. It just shows you how much he, how much he loved her. The relationship between Peggy and Dennis was next level. But in the span of three years, Rodman's lawyer, Bradford Cohen, and others in Rodman's team will discover that Peggy is faking her credentials. They'll accuse her of stealing, quote, a ton of money from the NBA All-Star. Rodman is not alone. He's one of several celebrity athletes who'll soon say that Peggy King, AKA Fulford, befriended them, promised to safeguard their finances, and then cheated them out of millions of dollars. She was caring and loving, but then also just robbing them blind at the same time. There was just two sides to Peggy. Perhaps it's ironic that the story of Peggy Ann Fulford begins in a city built for both the sinner and the saint, New Orleans. Uh, the side hustle is a huge part of people's identity here. A lot of people do that honestly, and uh, other people's side hustle is not honest. Peggy grows up here in a neighborhood where, according to journalist Ramon Antonio Vargas, the residents look out for their own. I'm pretty good at finding things out about people, but this kind of goes to the neighborhood that she's from. It was hard to find anybody that actually wanted to speak about her. Peggy Fulford declined an interview with American Greed, but records show her attending Spelman College under the maiden name Peggy Berard. Court records will later reveal multiple aliases attributed to Peggy. Some include the last names of her five ex-husbands. Chantel Cohen is 21 years old when she meets Peggy. They meet by chance through Chantel's friendship with an NFL rookie named Ricky Williams. Ricky and I met in elementary school. I was about five, he was about six. We went to the same junior high school, same high school, and he's just, he's my bestie. <laughs> he's my best friend. Two years before, New Orleans Saints head coach Mike Ditka had made one of the most controversial moves in NFL history, trading eight draft picks in order to nab Ricky Williams for the Saints. Ditka's infatuation with the dreadlocked rookie makes Williams the most hyped young athlete in the NFL. So for him to come into the NFL, that's a lot of pressure, you know, but everyone loved Ricky. When Ricky is chosen for an episode of MTV Cribs, he hires an interior designer to stage his New Orleans condo. Peggy unexpectedly tags along. She walks into the condo, and I'm just like, who is this lady? Beautiful, hair done, makeup, jewelry, Gucci, like, just stunning. The first time that we ever went out, she asked me and my friend to call her Raquel. 
people who know me know me as Peggy, but you know, I don't need people all in my business and everything like that. So when we go out, call me Raquel. We kind of laughed about it like, okay, you have an alias. Okay, cool. And if Peggy King has a secret to hide, Chantel writes it off as the eccentric behavior of the rich and beautiful. In the ensuing months, Peggy becomes close friends with both Chantel and Ricky. She tells them that she's a Harvard Law graduate who's made millions on Wall Street. She had a huge house in New Orleans, different cars, always was shopping. She just had all the accoutrements of someone who was extremely successful. She had the whole package. She claims she's also a certified financial advisor with a soft spot for professional athletes. Because they never had like a real plan of what they wanted to do after the field. Her main goal was keep the athletes from getting scammed by family members, by strangers. In 2001, after a challenging year in the NFL spotlight, Ricky is diagnosed with social anxiety disorder. Peggy's there to add a mature and stable influence in his life. Peggy had that, like, motherly instinct and kind of, you know, she would call you baby and, and let me take care of you. When Ricky and his partner, Kristen Barnes, get pregnant with their first child, Peggy throws Kristen a baby shower. And Peggy drives Kristen home from the hospital when the baby is born. Peggy was always there. She did dinners for us. And whenever Kristen and Ricky would get into it, Kristen would automatically call Peggy. She always said, I love you guys. You guys are like my brothers and sisters. You're like my family. Although he was not involved in Peggy's case, Chase Carlson is an attorney who specializes in investment fraud litigation. He shares what the court records disclose about Kristen and Peggy's friendship. Peggy said that she was a sister she never had. Uh, Ricky's ex-wife said that she was her best friend. And that was sort of Peggy's way of getting, latching on to Ricky and getting really uh, close to him. It's about this time that Ricky Williams agrees to let Peggy manage his finances. In his own documentary, he said, money doesn't matter to me. So this was a guy who really needed to be protected. He wasn't going to pay attention to his finances. Peggy doesn't even charge Ricky for her services. Peggy's whole thing was, we have to make sure that your kids are good. Like, you, you're a legend, basically, so your kids need to be set up that same way, so let me help you get to the goal that you need to get to to make sure you're set for life. Peggy puts the family on a monthly allowance. The rest of Ricky's income will deposit to a separate account for Peggy to manage. The decision gives Peggy free access to the family's finances. Peggy was going to be sort of the CFO for these players. She was going to help them with a budget, pay their bills, help them with their investments, and also do their taxes. She was going to do everything for them. The following season, Ricky Williams gets traded to the Miami Dolphins. Peggy, who is now married to a wealthy anesthesiologist, buys a house in Fort Lauderdale. And the entire entourage makes the move to South Florida. She bought a huge house right off the Intercoastal. So that was Miami for us. Party. Party, party, party. In 2002, Ricky Williams launches his first season with the Miami Dolphins with a superhuman display of force. The guy was a beast. Unbelievable, phenomenal athlete. He was highly coveted and a very physical player, one of the best running backs of all time. Chantel and Ricky are still close, but their circle of friends has changed. The wealth-driven lifestyle of Miami's pro ballers makes New Orleans look like the Bush Leagues. Everyone loved Ricky. He was the hottest thing. 
everyone wanted him at parties, dinners. Now, 50-year-old Peggy King is an essential fixture in their lives. 